study is that our, our farm gate value is very, very high, but the overall number of farms continues to decrease. We've got more, more land per farm. It makes it more difficult to get over that land in a timely manner. Um, we've always got that demand for high, high uh, lit quality as well as good yields. Um, <clears throat> and so that, that mandates that we need to be much quicker in terms of our ability to react to change, and it's harder and harder to do if you've got one set of spray equipment. In terms of stink bugs in cotton as it sits right now, um, there really is very little, if any, host plant resistance. So we can't look at different types of germplasm and say, oh, if you plant such and such a variety, that's going to give you resistance to stink bugs. That, that's just not there right now. Uh, BT cultivars have no effect on stink bugs whatsoever. Uh, and application of foliar insecticides, while we have some very good insecticides, i.e. Vidrin, um, those have some constraints in terms of can you always get a tractor in the field? Can you get a tractor or a sprayer to stand up? Um, and then how quickly can you get over the number of acres that you're trying to farm at that particular point in, in time? There's also some limitations in terms of application costs for every trip over the field. And I think that uh, there's some opportunities here because we're, we're running pivots on there that we can minimize some of those. Things I want you to keep in mind, if you're applying a foliar insecticide by ground rig, looking 7 to 10 acres somewhere in there, by airplane, say 2 to 4 uh, <coughs> gallons of, it, of uh, water, but with chemigation, if you run that pivot wide open as fast as you can go and do the math, that's 2,715 gallons per acre. Now, friends, coverage is not an issue, but keeping it on the plant could be. All right, so our objectives here are to evaluate the efficacy at different dilution rates uh, and look at uh, performance when adding oil, which is a common recommendation by industry that if you're going to inject an insecticide into that volume of water, you need to add some oil in there to keep those uh, <coughs> insecticide on the plants. Materials we looked at in this study would be dicrotophos. You all know that as Vibrin. Bifenthrin, we, you can go with a generic bifenthrin on that. Uh, <clears throat> and we're looking at different rates button there. So this is, this is a high rate, uh, 8 ounces per acre, diluted in 10 gallons. So this is a ground rig application. We're going to look at Vibrin and bifenthrin, both by ground rig. And then Vibrin and bifenthrin applied through the pivot. And in those <coughs> same compounds, plus a quart of uh, vegetable oil. You could also use twice refined cottonseed oil and two and a half point, uh, pints of Blendex VHC and, and that's a homogenizer that allows you to bring that oil into the water. Uh, I do want to point out at this point that dicrotophos or Bidrin is an OP. It is currently not labeled for chemigation. So this is a research application. Bifenthrin actually is labeled for chemigation. <clears throat> All right, we did some lab studies first to try and get some, some really fine-tuned data in terms of what we should expect to see in the field. And of course, in the lab, you can replicate things quite a bit more than you can on, on field-scale plots. So we've got three different species of stink bugs. Southern greens, that's the, the most common green stink bug that you all see. The uh, brown stink bug, which is our native species, that brown one. We also put some brown marmorated in there, which is a species that we don't have in this part of the state right now. Brown marmorated is a, a Piedmont critter at this point. Uh, so it's not a factor in cotton production in Georgia. In other states, it, it's kind of moving into there, so we wanted to have some data on those. When I talk about knockdown, that means that the insects were knocked down to the point where they flipped over and were unable to walk around. They were uncoordinated. And then uh, survivorship is when that bug was able to flip back over and walk away. And it's pretty common in insecticide studies where you knock the bug down, it looks like they're dead, and 24 hours later, it flips back over it and, and walks off there. Uh, in the field study, we did this at Camilla. Those were uh, eight rows by 40 foot long plots. Okay, so in the lab, we looked at knockdown both with food and without food. Uh, there's a knockdown individual there. So on my, on my grass, I'm going to set them up all the same way. The two uh, bars that are on the left side here, that's going to be the ground rig dilution. All the bars then that are on the right side, so that would be by bidrin by itself, by fenthrin by itself, bidrin plus oil, by fenthrin plus oil. So we're able to knock down everything at ground rig dilutions. These are southern greens. Uh, no food in those petri dishes. So you see we're knocking everything down. But interestingly, we're not doing a very good job of bifenthrin uh, if there's no food present. Look at brown stink bugs, very similar results. We're knocking everything down with the ground rig dilutions. At chemigation, I'm not knocking everything out in three hours. When I look at survivorship, so instead of looking at three hours, I'm looking at 48 hours later. So 48 hours after that application, what we literally do is just dip the insects into that particular insecticide. You see that there's no survivorship whatsoever in our ground rig dilutions. This put a lot of, uh, um, <clears throat> it, it looks good. If you're applying by ground rig, these data suggest that we're doing a good job killing things. 
Um, in terms of the chemigation stuff, you see that I've got up to 60% survival of southern greens when I use bifenthrin by itself. But interesting, when I add the oil, you see that I actually decrease survivorship. Unfortunately, with, bi with uh, Vidrin, it's just the opposite. I have those backwards. Vidrin by itself, fairly high survivorship. Add the oil, it decreases. Bifenthrin by itself, uh, I get great knockdown, but when I add the oil, I get more survivorship. So that's something that's going to be a common theme you're going to see throughout here. Browns are our, our, our native species, complete, uh, complete um, kill here, no survivorship. A little bit of survivorship here, and in this case, this really bothers me. I if 80% of the bugs are walking away at the end of the treatment, we're not getting economic control. Okay, so this would be, <clears throat> oh, I see what we're doing there, I was trying to point out the, the trends. Okay, so this would be the same assay, but done with food. So we put a little bit of food in there for the insects to feed on, and we know that if there's food available, typically the insect can detoxify the toxicant. Well, in a field situation, I think that's pretty reasonable, because there's plenty of cotton for that bug to feed on out there. Get great knockdown, no problems there, great knockdown. Again, everything is not 100%. Vitamin has not given us the kind of knockdown at three hours that we expect, but the proof to the pudding then becomes in the survivorship, 100% uh, mortality here, no survivorship, but in the case of <clears throat> Vidrin, you see that I've got 80% of those guys that are surviving if I put out Vidrin by itself and they've got something to feed on. So that, that is um, pretty concerning to me. In the case of the brown stink bug, again, ground rig dilutions, everything looks very, very good. And the fact that I've got this huge bar up here um, in, uh, by Fenthrin plus oil, so the interesting thing is the two different chemistries react very differently to the, to the uh, application of oil. So all these results are things where you just dip in the insect in the solution that's diluted the way it would as it comes out of the, out of the pivot. Uh, again, the, the trend lines, you see that uh, Vibrin, when you add oil, you decrease survival. By Fenthrin, when you add oil, it actually increases. And so that's, that's really, really unique. That's not something that I'd seen before, and so I think that's something we're going to need to keep in mind. And the thing that I'll come back to, of course, is that bifenthrin is labeled for use in chemigation. Uh, Vitrin is not. So the, the, you know, the, the situation that we're looking at here is it looks like without the oil would be better. Okay, so then we took those uh, same treatments and we went to the field. We did this work in Camilla. And actually, my thoughts are quite a bit wider than, than eight rows because when you run that uh, pivot, or in this case, we did it under a lateral, one sprinkler covers a little bit larger area. So we were sampling eight rows, but actually the, the plots were quite a bit wider than that. So this is over the course of time. This is some late planted cotton that we released ad additional stink bugs in. We had good pressure in this particular study. So I'll point out where the untreated are. So these are my untreated plots. You can see the second week, third week, fourth week, fifth, and sixth week of bloom. Uh, early on, see we've got kind of a spread in there, all under 20%. So that would be approaching threshold. Certainly at third week of bloom, if you're above 20%, that would be where we would treat. So these red drop lines, are where we actually made the uh, insecticide application. So in the case of the ground rig, I brought my ground sprayer in there and sprayed those plots. The other ones got the chemigation and we, were, we, had, we had a variable rate and some nozzles that we could turn things on and off. So as that lateral walked across the field, I could treat the appropriate plot with the appropriate treatment. So we actually ended up running the lateral back and forth a number of times. That, that's a, a research logistical issue there. So you can see my, my overall level of damage is pretty high. We're up above 20%. In this case, we're up you know, 30%. So good indication there that we've got good stink bug activity. And then there's a lot of jumble in here. This is, it gets a little frustrating. Remember, this is one year's data, and, and field studies tend to be a little bit more difficult to separate than lab studies. Um, but the, the general take home is that all of these treatments were giving me separation from the untreated. Regardless of what treatment I put out, I had less bowl injury compared to the untreated. Here, it's, it's really, really evident. <clears throat> at the first application, you see that everything dropped. So no matter where we were at, these all dropped except for the untreated. The issue that I had is when we put out the second application, most treatments dropped, but right here on those green bars, so that's uh, bifenthrin, bichemigation with no oil, which was one of my better treatments in the lab, I really didn't get any control at all. And what worries me is did I just select for insects that are resistant to that particular chemistry. If you don't kill them all, if you've got survivorship, then the ones that go on to reproduce assumedly would be passing on the genes that confer resistance to that particular insecticide. So this, this scenario really, really bothers me. We've got one year's worth of data. We certainly are going to be repeating this. But at this point, I'm pretty hesitant to make 
general recommendations and say, hey, this is a good idea. The other factor that we've got going on here is that these are quite a bit higher than those. We've got, in some cases, we have decreases before and after. In some cases, cases we have increases. In this case, the untreated is increasing. In this case, the uh, untreated is decreasing there. So I needed a way to adjust for that. Um, and so there, there's some statistical methods out there to adjust for both the change in the untreated as well as the change <coughs> in the treated before and after treatment. So I don't want to get lost in the mathematics here. But what the data suggests is that we were very, very consistent from one application to the other in our ground rig applications. Those bars are all pretty close together. Um, Bidrin, by chemigation, was consistent for two applications. But I had huge differences in bifenthrin when I chemigated that by itself. First application looked great. Second application did not look good at all. And that's where that bar was increasing. Bidrin plus oil, a little bit more separation. And in bifenthrin plus oil, a huge amount of separation. So long term, I, I really feel like we need more study on this before, from an extension standpoint, I can stand up and say, now, this is where you need to be. Uh, and then the, the final slide here that I've got is on the lint yield across all those plots. And of course, this is one study with six reps, no real standout differences in lint yield. The lint quality is at the gin right now, and so I'll, I'll get those data hopefully uh, within the next couple of weeks and we can start teasing out that we actually detect where we saw increased feeding over the course of the year. A lot of times stink bug damage does tease out in uh, lint quality. Where I have lots of stink bugs, I tend to have more yellow lint and it's not nearly as bright. All right, so I'm going to step out of the way and bring the next speaker on. I uh, just want to enforce that uh, we're doing work on this. Um, we're putting a lot of effort into it. The laboratory results suggest that we can kill, but uh, we get a little bit more recovery than we're comfortable with. And the field data at this point suggests that at least on first application, that we got good control on the second application that's not nearly as uh, consistent. And so there might be some recommendations long term that you can imagine well maybe one time a year or something like that. But at, at this point I would like to see a little bit more data before we make extension, re extension recommendations. Uh, the last thing I want to point out is that the Cotton Commission is funding this study. Those are checkoff dollars that y'all are paying and this is the kind of work that we do with that then is trying to do real boots on the ground type studies.